Mother of the News. Read all about it. Track down all the clues. With interesting people, there's a mystery to be solved. An adventure is unfolding, so why not get involved? Oh, hello. Would you like a copy of the Herbertville Chronicle? I sure would. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yes, same to you, dear. Are you and why do you seek me? Uh, I'm only a scarecrow stuffed with straw. I, I haven't any brains at all. I was hoping you could put some some brains into my head instead of straw. Well, well then I could say lots of intelligent things and and think whenever I wanted to. Why should I grant your request? Well, well because because you were a, a, a great wizard. Is that all you desire? Y yes, but my friend, the Tin Man, would like to see you. Send me the Tin Man. I am the Tin Man, made of tin. Bunk, bunk, bunk. And therefore, I have no heart and cannot love. I was hoping you could you could give me a heart, so that I may be like other people. I will take your request into consideration. Is there anyone else? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, me. Uh, uh, I'm a, a cowardly lion, scared of everything. Ooh. I'm supposed to be the king of the beasts, uh, uh, lord of the jungle. <laughs> I'm just a, a great big Brady cat. <laughs> I was hoping you you could give me some courage so that I could I could roar without scaring myself. Jim, try that line again. It might be funnier with a big roar instead of a little one. Okay, big roar. I was hoping uh, you could give me some courage so that I could roar. Without scaring myself. Yeah, that's good. Let's take a break. I thought you were very funny. Oh, thanks. I'm from the Herbertville Chronicle. Do you have time to answer a few questions? Sure. Hey, Barry, come here. I'm Jim, and this is Barry. Barry, this is... Uh... Lynn Davis. Hi. Lynn's from the Herbertville Chronicle. She wants to interview us. Sure. Here, have a seat. I'd just like to ask some questions. Who are you, and what are you doing in the park? We're trying to raise money for the Save the Park Fund. Our group is called the Kings Park Players, and there are three others besides Jim and myself. We perform here every Saturday during the summer. If the park closes, we'll have nowhere to perform, so the show is very important to us. What's your show about? Words. Words and voices. You see, our group believes that words are extraordinary things. They all have such meaning. Furious. Angry. Happy. Excited. Tired. 
Exhausted. Enormous. Gigantic. Tiny. Frightened. Brave. Noble. Heroic. Evil. Nasty. Scheming. <laughs> oh, you really make those words come to life. Words can conjure up an image in the mind. And then we use our voices to bring these images to life. To help the mind see the meaning of the words that are lying on the page. Yeah. Rats. They fought the dogs and killed the cats. And bit the babies in the cradles. And ate the cheeses out of the vats. And licked the soup from the cook's own ladles. Split open the kegs of salted sprats. Made nests inside men's Sunday hats. And even spoiled the women's chats. By drowning their speaking with shrieking and squeaking in 50 different sharps and flats. Oh, I can just see those rats. I'd hate to have been there. That was part of a poem called The Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning. I hate rats. So did everyone in Hamelin. The Pied Piper agreed to get rid of them by playing on his pipe. And ere three shrill notes the pipe had uttered, you heard as if an army muttered, and the muttering grew to a grumbling, and the grumbling grew to a mighty rumbling, and out of the houses the rats came tumbling, Great rats, small rats, lean rats, brawny rats, brown rats, black rats, gray rats, tawny rats, brave old plotters, gay young friskers. Where did he take the rats? For that, Lynn, you can either come back to the performance on Saturday, or you can read that poem for yourself. What was the name of the poem again? The Pied Piper of Hamelin by Robert Browning. Let's rehearse our song now, Jim. Here's another good way you can tell a story. In a song? In a song. Why don't you move over there, and we'll show you. Crossing a log, Robin came upon a giant stranger who shouted, Be gone! Stand aside, for my name is Little John, Among the leaves so green, oh! Stand aside! Give way! Let me by! Why not try? My blow! Too slow! Fighting to and fro Among the leaves so green, oh! Oh, I'll fight all day And I'll fight all day, good blow! Bravo! Fighting to and fro Among the leaves so green, oh! They fought all day and then all night Little John hit Robin with all his might into the river, it was such a sight Among the leaves so green, oh Sing the merry men, we're the merry men Sing then, again, sing then, again Merry, merry men, among the leaves so green, oh That's great, it's really fun hearing a story in a song well, the adventures of Robin Hood and his merry men make an exciting story. Maybe I should try reading that, too. Now it's your turn to entertain us, Lynn. Do you know any poetry? Not really. Our newspaper has a motto that's a kind of a poem. I keep six honest serving men. They taught me all I knew. Their names are what and why and when and how and where and who. That's a very good motto to have. But I don't know who wrote it or anything. That was written by Rudyard Kipling. R-U-D-Y-A-R-D, -R Rudyard, K-I-P-L-I-N-G, Kipling. Who's he? He's an English novelist and poet. Did most of his writing at the end of the last century. He lived most of his life in India, so he wrote about the British Army in India and things like that. With well, a man who would be king is one of his stories. I've never heard of him. Oh, sure you have. Have you ever seen a film called The Jungle Book? Mm-hmm. Well, there's stories that Kipling wrote. And he's the same person who wrote our motto? That's enough talking, you two. When you came in, we were rehearsing a play about the wonderful Wizard of Oz. How would you like to help us out by playing the part of Dorothy? Me? No, I could Oh, come on. Of course you could. It's only for this rehearsal. Jim needs to practice, and the girl playing Dorothy can't be here today. Well, all right. Good. What do I have to do? Here's the script. You play Dorothy. She's a little girl who's lost in the land of Oz. And in this scene, she's walking through the cornfield, and she meets the scarecrow. What do I read? 
you read all of the lines that are written beside Dorothy's name. But you don't read the words that are in brackets. Those are stage directions. They tell you what to do and how to say the words. The first stage direction says, surprised. Why do you think Dorothy is surprised when Scarecrow says hello? Because, because she's never heard a Scarecrow speak before? Exactly. Now go ahead. Right, Lynn. Do you want to start from over there? Okay. Do you want me to walk past you? Yeah. Ready? Good morning. Did you speak? Of course I spoke. How do you do? Fine, thank you. How do you do? Not very well. Or it's very tedious being perched up here night and day. Uh, perhaps you could lift me off this pole. I, I would be greatly obliged if you did. Whoa! Oh, that's much better. Thank you very much. Now, who are you and, and where are you going? My name is Dorothy, and I live in Kansas. But my house was carried away by a... I don't know this word. Oh, it's cyclone. You know, a big storm, a tornado. Oh, but my house was carried away by a cyclone. So I'm going to the Emerald City to ask the great Oz to send me home. Oh, well, uh, maybe Oz can give me some brains. <laughs> For you see, my head is stuffed with straw. Which way is it to the Emerald City? Points off stage. Oh, this way, along the yellow brick road. You were very good. It was fun, but I have to finish delivering my papers. See you Saturday. Time has come, the walrus said, to speak of many things, of sailing ships and sealing wax, and cabbages and kings, and why the sea is boiling hot, and whether pigs have wings. Perhaps again on Tyalveron, the girls were confronted by a large wooden door. As they timidly opened the creaking door, a fierce, roaring tiger leapt at them. Good day, young lady. You read that very well. Oh. Hi, Mr. Walker. You work for this newspaper, don't you? And you want to know all about the old days. Well, I can tell you a thing or two. Been in Herbertville all my life. No more than most. Tried to tell them, but they just don't believe me. Who doesn't believe you? Why, everybody. Ever since we got that new mayor, they say it was his family, the Edens that used to live at King's Manor. But that's not true. Edwards. That was the name of the folks that lived in the old manor. Are you sure? Oh, of course I'm sure. Nine years old I was when the manor burned down. Watch the fire from a bedroom window. It was the Edwards family that was burned out. I tried to tell people, but I'm old. They tell me my memory's gone. Then I got the names mixed up. <laughs> you haven't got the names mixed up, Mr. Walker. It was Edwards. I believe you. I know you're telling the truth. But how can we get everyone else to believe us? We need some kind of proof. About what? Discover all